Dr. Alvar Sainz Otero, and he's from MIT, and he's going to share with us an exciting twist on robotics and tell us about how students are becoming engaged in programming robots on the International Space Station. Thank you very much. Um, as you guys might have heard a second ago, I, a cough attack just came in, so I hope I don't cough all the time. Um, I got a call just over the weekend, ready for the prison, for the conference. Um, uh, yeah, so um, we actually presented Zero Robotics last year, and uh, for the for the, 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 those of you that saw it, we talked about uh, high school students, and we talked about um, all over the country, and it was very exciting, and we're still doing that. Um, in 2012, we had another round of about 1,500 students join us uh, la last year. Um, uh, over 30 states were represented last year. We had 40 teams from Europe, so it's, both, uh, it's, it's growing. But um, a lot of people say, and I actually don't want to say it's true or not, but the fact out there is that there's a lot of people saying that when you have to capture students, when you have to get them to love STEM is at the middle school level. And back in 2010, we had the Summer of Innovation from NASA dedicated to middle school students, and we tried zero robotics. And it was hard, but we did it. And we did it only with schools right around MIT because we hired one MIT undergraduate for every single school that participated. That's not a very expandable model. You cannot hire a single intern for every school you want to participate. So after that experience, we came back to NASA, cases appeared, and everybody said, let's try it again, but can we do that beyond that, <coughs> that model of one student per team? So we created a brand new curriculum. And I'm gonna talk about that one, and I'm also gonna show you an, a big update to our website to make it much more uh, user-friendly from the middle school level. Um, so, uh, Zero Robotics, what is it again? Just a quick summary. Um, it's a competition. It's a, it's a software programming competition where students, high school and now middle school students, again, can actually send their code to the International Space Station and have that code tested with the Sphere satellites. And uh, we'll see a couple pictures of that in a second. But it's about students learning programming, getting excited about it, learning about robotics. Because it's not just programming, they have to learn the physics and math behind moving robots around the space station. And they basically become engineers to some level. Um, in our case, I'm gonna show you the graphical interface, but I did want to point out that uh, we had a student um, work in the, uh, participate in the 2009-2010 high school competition and then come to MIT and be one of the leaders. And uh, that's what he said. It's the best opportunity a high school passionate about space and programming could do. With every line of code, Zero Robotics kindled my passion for space. That, that's, a, that's an amazing feedback to get from a student who, as part of Zero Robotics, ultimately made it to MIT and uh, then actually kept helping Zero Robotics grow inside the school. Now, 2013, what are we doing? Um, we are partnering with the statewide after-school networks. They're an educational group uh, with, which is in present in 48 states. We actually chose one state that is for they're not, so we have a, another uh, relationship there. But they're present in 48 states, and they dedicate their time to finding how to fill the student time outside normal school with activities that are gonna help the communities. It's not all about STEM. They do a lot of non-STEM work, but they do everything about after-school work. So we're working with the Massachusetts After-School Partnership, which helped us fund Zero Robotics since the Summer of Innovation for the new school program, the California After-School Network, the Florida After-School Network, and the Georgia After-School Network, which has a different name. I don't remember, it's G-A-I-C. There's a complicated uh, uh, acronym there. And in addition, uh, our original uh, founder, uh, funder, the original person who funded Zero Robotics, Lorna Finman, 
was an entrepreneur in Idaho, which does not have a um, statewide attitude network, said, I want in also in the middle school uh, competition. And it's kind of hard to tell your original funder, no, you don't get to do it. <laughs> so we said yes. <laughs> um, but not only that, she came pretty well uh, at, uh, with, with a very nice partner in crime to this, which is Barbara Morgan, which uh, many of you might recognize the name as the teacher astronaut. She, she went to space, she was up there. Uh, she learned about zero robotics this January when she helped us with the high school competition and she fell in love with it. So between original funder and Barbara Morgan, they're running the Idaho part of the competition this year. So we're all over the place. And the big thing to note from the map is that MIT is right here and everybody else is really far away. <laughs> we are no longer hiring one student to go to the schools, right? Instead, um, what we're trying to do is create a curriculum, okay? Be before I go into the curriculum, I wanted to point out, not only are we far away in distance, we're far away in time. I had no clue that Massachusetts, just because people claim New England has a long winter, we end school really late. Apparently not everybody ends school at the end of June. And not everybody starts school after Labor Day. So now we have Florida, Georgia, and Idaho starting things on, Ju on June 17th, while California, Massachusetts began things on July 8th. And yet at the same time, we're supposed to have everybody competing and learning things at the same time. So we had to create a curriculum that dealt both with spatial and time differences in, in, the, set in, in the setup. So this is what we did. It was a five-week curriculum. MAP, the Massachusetts Athletic School Partnership, they knew that five weeks is a really good time frame for a summer program. Idaho said, can we do it in four weeks? We said maybe, but everybody is in the four <coughs> to six weeks time frame. So five weeks was a great middle point for us to work with them and, and tell them this is what we want. And we said five weeks to infinity and beyond. This is for middle schoolers, don't forget that, right? So I'm not talking to you college kids, I'm talking to middle schoolers, to infinity and beyond. Let me just introduce you to space, let's talk about space. Then developing a strategy. No, you're supposed to win the game, not just type code and see what happens. You're supposed to actually win the game. So we introduced them programming while teaching them about strategy at the same time. Then we go into an intramural competition in the third week. We tell them, you're a group of 10, 20 students, split up and compete against each other internally. See how you're doing. And then on the fourth week, we're gonna do a regional competition, currently statewide. So Florida schools against Florida schools, Georgia and so on, you all compete against each other. And that's how we have to separate the, times, the, the, the time differences between the different program stars. In week five, we call it Reaching for the Stars which is a little bit of a fun there because it's not quite. Um, they send off the code and then MIT does all the work to get the code to space station. But it is the student code that gets there. What we do is put them all together and then the students get it up there. With five states and approximately 40 teams, not every team gets to go to space station. We don't get enough astronaut time to run everybody's code. So for the first time, middle school students are actually gonna learn about elimination to go to station from the zero robotics point. High school students, that's good for them. Middle school students, yep, suffer reality. Not everybody gets a medal in, in, in zero robotics, but everybody gets to participate at, at, at the end of the day. That's the point. One of the things we're doing in week five that uh, NASA and, uh, and, and I hope Casey's also really likes is we're teaching students more about what's going on with space, right? Everybody says, oh, well, not everybody. But you go out there to the general public and, they, and, and you tell them uh, you work with NASA, and they're like, isn't NASA there? So no, our, our goal actually is use that fifth week while we prepare things so that the middle school students go back to their parents and tell their parents, no, NASA's not there. Really cool stuff is going on in space and my things, my, my, my software will actually get up to space. So it's not that, lots of things are going on. Um, Every week we start with 
Goals, student outcomes, teaching tips, flow of activities, and activity details. I hate reading slides, I'll go really fast with them. The whole point is, with every week, we're actually telling a teacher, or at least trying to, and that's what we're testing right now, not that, that my, that I have, my have never programmed themselves what they're gonna do, okay? They, they need to do the testing, um, they need to do the, the, the teaching when they don't really know programming. So we guide them at every step. We thought about how does a teacher learn and how do we teach them uh, so that they don't have to be a programming expert and yet they can actually teach what's going on. Um, we give them materials to work, lots of ice breakers, lots of things to do. And ultimately, kind of based on this quote right here, your science and math lessons are replicable to the school year curriculum. We're actually hoping that our curriculum will ultimately make it into the common core and next generation science standards. So we have that in the back. Okay. We have lots of tutorials. That was really important. Get them started slowly. N getting to know our programming interface. Getting to know programming. What's a variable? Actually, I hope most of you know what a variable is, but there's teachers out there who have no clue what a variable is. So we need to teach the teachers and so the teachers can teach the students. What's a variable? What are arrays? What are all these programming things? Basic if then conditionals and so on. Um, we, go, we get a little bit deeper into some things like for loops and um, uh, creating your own functions in which three, but they don't need to do that. <laughs> now, as far as the game, we do cheat a little bit with the middle school game. We take our previous high school game and make it easier and just gear it towards the middle school student because we don't have enough manpower to create a completely new game for them. So if you want to learn a lot about our game for the middle school this year, go see our results of the last year high school competition and make it easier. That's the middle school game. And that was important because we need to uh, be able to uh, move forward with the curriculum rather than the game itself. Um, a really big thing that goes on in the middle schoolers is that we prepare a field day. So in this case, they came to MIT, that's the Prudential Tower, um, and uh, we get them to act the game. So we actually make an obstacle course that looks like the game they're playing in Space Station and they act it out. And it's really helpful, especially when you blindfold one of them and another one gives instructions and they have to be really precise, like you're programming the other students. Um, if you have time to read that quote, I think it's really amazing. That's exactly what we're trying to teach the students, right? <laughs> um, they can come to MIT, right? And uh, some of the students are saying, oh, can I go back to MIT as a student? That's what we're looking for. <laughs> now, this year, some students went <coughs> to KSC, not to MIT because somewhere in Florida. And that's also happening, which is also very exciting to see the field day expanding around. They have two minutes for the IDE? Yes, yeah. So what I was going to hope to do right now, here we go, is show you what we did to simplify the programming interface for the students. I'm in zerorobotics.org, which is our, our main server. And I logged in. I went to my IDE. And I told it I want a new project with a graphical editor. Oops. There we go. So now that I have a new project with a graphical editor, um, I have this setup here that basically tells me, here's the loop of what's happening inside your sphere. What do you want to do with it? So instead of me having to type and forget a semicolon or get a minus sign error or not know the function name, and look at right here. And I want to control the sphere. For example, I want to set the position of the sphere. Now, in, in the project that I have, that position actually starts at 0 0.500, no, 0 0.500, I believe. So I'm gonna move it a little bit around, maybe to 0 0.5, 1.0, and uh, 1.0, just so that we, we see it move. There we go. Now, that's what I'm going to do right now. You can imagine how students actually need to use 
a lot of logic statements, including if then statements and so on, to make it do much more interesting things. But once I click simulate, <coughs> when I click run, this is actually going to our server, which is running a high fidelity simulation. We're allowing high school and middle school students to use the same simulation that my master's and PhD students use at MIT to move the satellites around. And that is why once the compiler is done, the simulation is there, we can literally use the code that gets created here in order to, um, send, it to, to send it to space station if they're among the finalists. In this case, I control the blue satellite. I need to let it go a little bit faster so that you're not waiting here right now for it to move slowly. Right? And in fact, it went to um, an X of 0.5 a y of minus one, sorry, a, a y of plus one, and a c of plus one, because the space station plus c is down. So it actually went the correct direction. Um, the very last quick thing is for students who are really um, interested, they can actually see the code <coughs> that would be created in C. So you can still type in C if you wanted to. But we're not, we're not restricting middle schoolers to not type C, we're giving the option to not do it. So with this, I hope that all of you can go to Sir Robert's website and make your own projects and <laughs> find students to mentor because your code will not get there, it's gonna be the student's code that gets there. <laughs> Thank you.